do as much of it. Shade Four Five Academy in the building. Shout out DJ Drama Cannon, trendsetter DJ Sense. Got the absolute pleasure. Uh, one of my favorites personally. Um, definitely doing it real, real heavy in the game. My man Kendrick Lamar was popping. What the deal, man? Oh, you in the city? Yeah. Um, doing the promo thing. First of all, man, congrats on all the success from Good Kid, Mad City. Um, a lot of people have declared that. Uh, one of the crowning albums in hip hop today. Um, also, it. you know, being strong in the in the West Coast movement as a whole. Um, comparing your album to Illmatic and the Reasonable Doubts. Um, mm. Now you got the second album that you're working on. Do you feel like a sense of pressure transforming from album one to album two? Uh, not really. You know, I know the word pressure was thrown around on on the first album before I got started. Yeah. So essentially, I just. Uh, trap into the same uh, mental that I always been in as far as uh, basically challenging myself and always continue to do what I do yeah. and not really worry about uh, what, what, what the everybody else got to say yeah, yeah what the expectations you know I, I expect people to expect nothing <laughs> when I'm in creative mode man and that's just how I've been since day one can you explain the difference between this new project and the, and the last project, are there some similarities? Mm, I think more the, the similarities would be just the overall connection. I felt like uh, the, the first album, you know, put me in a space where if you weren't even from Compton or, or from the ghetto or, you know, Atlanta or anywhere across the world, you know, you still can relate, you know, to the story that I had, you know. So if anything, you know, it always have a connection with the people, you yeah. know, that, that, you know, actually enjoy music on, on a day to day basis. Are you still good? Like when you did Good Kid, Mad City, you know how you had a lot of the skits mm. and um, the whole sequencing of the album. You still going to yeah. have that in there? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, you know, till the, the actual album is done. Uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm just in the creative space where uh, I really don't like staying stagnant yeah. or, 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 you know, not being able to challenge myself or taking the easy way out, you know, and certain things that I could have been done and things like that. But I'm always in a place where I always want to... Uh, you know, up my game just a little bit more in any type of direction. Of course, Kendrick Lamar's in the building. Shout out my man, DJ Drama, Don Cannon, Trendsetter, DJ Sense. Um, so, on top of that, you know, you've been they've been crowning you, and and, and you feel, um, you've been receiving all that like they you they put you in that class of the Nas's and the Jay Z's. H have you been receiving that type of energy? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a a lot of energy. Um, since the moment I dropped out. And um, coming back around is even more energy yeah. because I'm from the energy from the first album. So yeah. um, now it's just a little bit of, without me having to actually uh, say or, or do too much because, you know, you, you, you lay your groundwork and now it's like, okay, what's next? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's really about me always staying uh, at, at a ground where I can't let that go all the way to the mental because yeah. you slow your work ethic down, you <laughs> feel me? And I got to keep it that way. I got a long way to go and, and you know, it don't stop or one or two albums. So, at that point, like, you've embraced this leadership role, like, yeah. um, being a, a pioneer, you only have one album out. Mm -hmm. um, can you kind of, like, dive into that responsibility um, yeah. for what's, what's Kendrick's role as being at the forefront of hip-hop right now? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a huge responsibility as far as leadership. You dig what I'm saying? So, Whenever I'm put in a position where, you know, I can either take it for granted or, or do what I do and lead the pack. You know, I can either make music this way or I can make music that way. I can follow, you know, a, a certain sound or I can say something, you know. And my first initial steps, you know, even with the second process, is coming out with a record like I. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and initially, the, the song, it, it represents all my partners that's in the penitentiary that have nothing to live for, you know, that have no self-worth and things like that. And the kids that come up to me after these shows, uh, uh, you know, that feel like they don't have nothing to live for on the outside. So with that being said, you know, I feel like that's that's leadership within itself. Yeah. Because uh, I'm, I'm in a position where I can, you know, could easily do any type of record, yeah. you know, and, 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 you know, go for the airways and hit the radio, you know, with a club banger, things like that. But, 
every time I come out, I want to make a statement. It's really about the body of work, you know, and it's not really no price you could put on it as far as selling singles and, and you know, records like that. Absolutely. Well, speaking of I, let's get into that. Um, Very yeah, inspirational that. record. Positive record. It's in its own vein right now. Yeah. And um, I was reading this Vibe article. Um, Ab Soul said that you are taking responsibility for yourself, for the record for I. Um, talk about the energy and the response since you recorded that record and put it out. Yeah, the the, the, the energy around it is, is like uh, one of the things where you don't expect it. <laughs> and that's exactly, that's exactly be my MO from Jump. You know, I really never like people to... Uh, assume what i'm going to do or, or what i'm going to say or what i'm going to talk about and, and you know going out in the streets and meeting different people in the streets and saying that the song uh it represents them and, and who they are and where they stand because a lot of people i can curse on you do whatever you want a lot of people a lot of people is fucked up man yeah yeah real fucked up you know and, and you know when you do something like that and you say something so bold in a vein where uh uh you know, people can relate to it. They respect it, and they respect who you are a little bit more. Uh, I want to do it a little bit different. I want to go back to to the essence of you know the urban culture and do some uh, soul shit. You exactly. know what I mean? And it's crazy now because the the culture is so messed up. The kids are so messed up and so confused that they don't necessarily know that you know that's a soul uh, uh, type of feel. Even the tempo. You know, we done took that in this day and age, 2015, and we call it pop. With the Isley Brothers sample. Right, yeah. We call it pop now. Yeah. That's not, that's us. <laughs> you know, that's 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 the community. That's, I know. That's here. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? So it's right for me to step out, you know, and tell these kids, like, know, know your history, man, and, and know that, you know, everything comes from, from our leaders, you know, every genre, mm-hmm. you know, always took it from our craft and, and me representing that, you know, it shows out into the streets and it shows out into the, to the system, to the correctional facilities, you know, they hear it and, 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 you know, the homies in the neighborhood and, you know, to the corporate world itself because money don't make you happy either. Absolutely. Um, it's funny that, you know, you talked about the record I, that you came, it came from a soul background, of course. Yeah. And, um, but the funny thing is, it's taking on a pop life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, kind of like, did you ex- did you expect it was just going to just go to that level or, you know what I mean? Because it's like some of the reaction on the urban side, it's, it's kind of confusing. It's like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. Uh, I mean, that's just because of the classifications of, you know, where music has been, you know. So if change ever going to happen, who going to make the, who going to who going to make the start? You know? Exactly. It don't necessarily have to start with me. I just open the gates for uh, any other urban cat, hip hop cat, you know, to do some soulful music and bring it back to its original roots, Absolutely. rather than top forty, Absolutely. all the time. Now it can live on urban, and these people know and understand where it come from, and 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 feel it just as strong as it was when it was back, you know, in the day. So, uh, yeah, that that's my job, and that's that's what I represent, and I own that. Absolutely. Um, of course, Kendra Lamar is in the building now. Good Kid, Mad City, two thousand and twelve. It's now 2014. Yeah, it's been a while. I know it's two years, <laughs> yeah. but you you know what's funny is like all the classic artists, the classic albums. Um, I mean the Outkast, um, who else? The Jay Zs of the mm-hmm. world, um, the Nas's. Yeah, they yeah. used to take like two years to do their next album. It yeah. wasn't the whole in between where it's a lot of features. And I noticed like yeah, yeah. when you do your journey, doing your progress and doing your process, you don't really do a lot of features. You don't really do a lot of mixtapes. You did a lot of mixtapes. Yeah, prior. You know, Starting off, but yeah. like now that you know you on a certain level, like it, I mean, is that something that you take pride in? Is that something that you really do? Uh, you know, truthfully, features and things like that, it really just have to make sense. Mm. Uh, I really don't don't just necessarily get in the studio, uh, you know, with certain individuals just because they got a name or a bigger name or you know they can bring this audience. It just got to make sense at the end of the day. You know, when I come across records that you know feel like I hear this person on it and they can take the record to the next level rather than just jumping on it. Yeah. You know, whether it's a killer verse or a hook or a bridge, then it, it's, it's it's possible. But for this process on this album, um, I got a lot to say and a lot lot to talk about. And it's it just one of them things where, you know, sometimes you got to make sense as far as room for, you know, different acts and things like that. So it's really just the same process. I've been in-house with my same four producers. Yeah. And uh, me writing, you know, and, 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 and 
formulating music around that. Okay. All right. So, but you still working with Dre, of course, right? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, and cool. then, um, you know, Pharrell, he's been um, yeah. noted saying um, how phenomenal this new project yeah. um, that you have is just, is just so crazy. Can you kind of dive into that and yeah. the whole process working with Pharrell and how does yeah. that turn out? Pharrell always been, uh, how can I say this, an uh, uh, inspiration, you know. Like I said, the, the story before, prior to a Good Kid, Mad City coming out, you know, he gave me a lot of um, a lot of inspiration just being confident on putting a record out like that. Because there haven't been like a concept record in a while with skits, you know. It's always been there, but 2000s, you, you haven't seen it in the late, you know, this day and age. So I was kind of skeptical as people going, you know, be familiar with it. Yeah. And uh, this, this process as well, you know, um, we got in the studio, um, did a few sketches and, and a few ideas, and, um, yeah, played a, I played a few skits and, 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 you know, pieces, well, pieces of the record. And yeah. he got a just of it, man, and he's excited about it, you know. And that's just one of the dudes that, that you know, inspired me creatively to do what I want, mm -hmm. you know, the same way I did on my first album. How many records have y'all done so far? We've done a few. I wouldn't say full records. Okay. We've done a few, though, you know, that's that's pretty crazy in the can. I can't say what to end up on it, yeah. you know, until the project is finalized, but we definitely work. Okay. Um, have you heard about this whole phenomenon in 2014 that there's no platinum albums uh, that have been sold? You, you, have you heard that? Uh -uh. Except was it Ken? It was uh, Taylor Swift. Is that yeah, the only? Taylor pla Swift was the only, it's the only platinum, platinum album. Only sure. platinum album in um, 2014. 2014. Wow. Just sad. They showed a row. Wow. A row of uh, albums. There was nothing on the shelf. But, <laughs> but when you think, yeah, and you know, it goes back to my. Uh, my initial uh, uh, conversation I've been having this past week, we got to stand behind our artists. Yeah. You know, hip hop culture got to, we're yeah. too trendy, you know, sometimes. And we jump on the next thing, you know, if it, if it's, you know, not in the club no more and things like that. And uh, I'm not, I'm not necessarily even speaking for myself because I do a whole, you know, type of music and, and, and people appreciate it. But cats I do like, you know, and I do want to see them, you know, win everybody in the hip hop culture, whatever sound you do. You know, whether you bring the energy, whether you bring the lyrics, or whether you, you know, you like to have fun. It's all part of the rap community. But our people got to be behind it. And you got to be sure about yourself for them to be behind it. With hip-hop, we got to stay creative and, and stay that we actually appreciate it and not using it as a disposal tool to necessarily just get on for, you know, one particular time and then fall off and, and move to the next. Yeah. So what that does, it, it confuses the consumers and it, it confuses the culture. Yeah. You know, so we got to stay behind it and stick to our artists, man. And it's just like that. Absolutely, man. Kendrick Lamar's in the building. Shout out Drama Cannon. My man Keenan's in the building, Interscope. Trent said a DJ sent. So HBO's uh, music supervisor tweeted yeah. out about this record. <laughs> yeah. King Kunta. Oh, man. Talk yeah. about it. Uh yeah that was that was one of the pieces a uh, snippet piece that we uh I played in the Pharrell session uh, I didn't even know he was in there he was ducked off <laughs> so Pharrell produces record no nah, he didn't produce his record okay. this is just some off my album from my producers and uh just 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 a piece of uh, of a record I wouldn't even know if it would make the album okay uh but it's just, it's just one of the things that you know brings the a great energy for the project and he overheard it and he has some things to say about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's it's all love. Kendrick Mars in the building, man. Um this new chapter, uh, is there a mission um, that you're on, like um, mm -hmm. this is a Kendrick Lamar mission, first mission with Good Kid, Mad City was in yeah. this direction. Can you kind of break down the new mission that you're on on, on this second album? Uh, I think the the mission the mission is still the same. It's still the the you know the idea of bringing people not only into my world but you know them recognizing their own world as well, you know, and, and making it cohesive like that where we all can relate to each other. Because I feel music is supposed to move people in a way you know. It brings people together as far as different, nation, different nationalities or, you know, different uh, uh, acts of life and things like that. Like I said, when I made Good Kid, me going all the way to Germany and kids feeling like they was a part of being from company, you know, that that that's like the biggest accomplishment for me. So um, the journey is still continue. You know, it's just a progression of it. OK. Um, of course, last week was Halloween. Um, a lot of pictures yeah. surfaced. Yeah. You were dressed as Jesus. Jesus. And, Jesus um, Christ, the master. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, you always talk about your spirituality, um, yeah. your foundation. Um, kind of dive into that and, and, and talk about the, your spiritual influence and how utilizing your platform, how all that ties together. Yeah, man. 
<laughs> yeah, the idea just came <laughs> to me, man. I, you know, I've been every, I done, I done been everything in the book on Christmas. I done been ghosts, <laughs> uh, the devil with the red or whatever. Why not be Jesus? Why not do somebody that I really idolize, you know, rather than a person? I could have been any person in the world, but, you know, I wanted to be Jesus, <laughs> uh, black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you dig know what I'm saying? But, you know, spirituality, I, I wouldn't say I'm the most re religious or, you know, follow uh, the different aspects of it, but I'm, I'm a spiritual dude, and I believe it's a master as well. And I don't tend to hide that. I put it in my music. I put it in my everyday life. Absolutely. You know, nothing is a coincidence with me. You know, us being right here is not no coincidence. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you being in fear is not no coincidence. You fell in at certain different things in mm. life. It's not a coincidence. Mm. You know, everything it leads up, you know, to a situation. And uh, I put that in my music. and I will always put that in my music, you know, whether it's, you know, my mixtapes, my albums, uh, my freestyles, mm -hmm. you're going to hear something in there. So far, what has been Kendrick's confirmation of success? What was that moment? Mm, that's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bar. Uh -huh. That's a 16. That's a sweet 16 right there. <laughs> confirmation of success. Uh, it's, it's a few of them, man. It's a few. Feel free to drop that 16. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Put it in the bars. <laughs> let me see, man. I think confirmation was really uh, uh, knowing that it was a a bigger world than than the reality I lived in. You know, actually being able to use uh, my funding of you know from doing music yeah. to get out of Compton and and see other places around the world. That's not just what I know. Yeah, you know that was confirmation going across. You know, like I said to to London or you know to France. And seeing these kids singing these songs word for word and living by them, mm. you know, my reality and, and, and you know, taking it and doing something positive, that was confirmation for me. I usually think it was going to be the money and the cars and, you know, the women yeah. and, and the lifestyle that come <laughs> with it. And we all love it. Yeah. You know, you can't front you can't front on that. But at the same time, that's something you'll always continue to chase. Yeah. And, and, and it, it come and goes, you know, with the lifestyle. So I thought it was going to be that. But, you know, it's, it's a different thing. It's the fulfillment of uh you know, making people enjoy themselves and feel good about themselves with the music I make. Absolutely. That's Everything else, the money, all that good stuff just comes with it. it. Now, speaking it of... comes. Speaking of the confirmation of success, has there been that time that you could that you could recall that sticks out was that challenging moment, especially as a competitive artist? Yeah. Was there, was there that moment where you was like, yo, I got, I got to step my game up? Can you recall that? Oh, man, plenty of times, man. Um I can go back to the first session I had with Dre. Mm. The first time I met Dre was my first session with Dre. Wow. You know, so you're in the mental state, okay, I'm a fan. Yeah. And then you realize, I got a job to do. Exactly. I got to hop in this booth and spit a crazy verse in order for this dude to say, okay, you live up to the hype. Because all he <laughs> heard was the mixtapes and things like that. Yeah. So I got to go in the, st in the studio. I'm a fan the whole time. And then you be like, okay, right to this. I'm like, oh man, okay. <laughs> I can't even be a fan of him. I can't even I gotta stop telling about the stories. I remember seeing him in Compton and things like that. So I had to snap out of that real quick. Yeah. And that was a challenge. You know, I had to write the verse on the spot. Boom, a whole song actually. And the song actually ended up on my album. What was the song? Compton. Yeah, that was the first beat, first verse and everything. Crazy. Crazy. And it ended up like that. Uh, he probably set it up like that though. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was it was a test for sure. Yeah. Me knowing Dre now. <laughs> it for sure is a test to see if I really do it. Right. You know, sometimes you know you, you may have artists that you know have people writing for them. Yeah, you never know. It's, it's young cats in the game that you know have ghostwriters and things like that. Yeah, that's crazy. And, and you know, me being fairly new, he wanted to see. Yeah, and uh, that was one time. The next time was this one. I knew that that was planned. Dre did that purposely <laughs> when I went to Eminem studio. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Eminem don't allow nobody in the studio, mm. but you if you write into the track. He just wants you and his engineer. And that was a moment I say, okay, I see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? They, they, they try to see, is this the real deal or not? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I wrote them raps out on paper, and I left it there. <laughs> I left it there. I walked in the booth. And uh, that was a point in time I say, okay, you know, M, M is one of the greatest to ever do it. You know, so you have to at least come up to standards of what he's about to put on the track because he's going to demolish it. And um, Crazy. You know, it happened just like that. You know, that was a, a time, too. Man, you, you've had a lot going on in it off of one off of one project, man. Yes, sir, man. It's big a blessing. Shit, big shit, definitely. Um, you got Saturday Night Live coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming up one more time. Yeah. Again. Performing. Um, are you are you now? Let me ask you. Um, 
Are you just going to be performing? Or or can we see expensive (laughs) skits? Like, what are we doing? You know they got me on there with Woody Harrison. Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be a trip. (laughs) Got to do the skits. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully we'll get some skits in there. You know, all that stuff take preparation, though, so we're going to see how it turn out. Um, For sure we performing, though. Absolutely. Uh, We do the skits. That's a blessing, too, because, you know, I like to have fun with that. Especially he's on there. I'm a fan. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going down, man. Saturday Night Live, I think, November 15th. November 15th. Yeah. Any other acting opportunities, movies, TV? Oh, man. Acting. Uh, probably in the future. You know, I'm, I'm still so focused on the music. You know, anything I do, I like to put 110% in it, you know, and I don't like no no distractions. So if I do get into uh, some type of film, you know, it'll be uh, head on. It won't be me being in the studio and then going to a film and, and acting the next day and juggling things like that. I like to put 100% in something I do. Okay. Yeah. Um. You just did the uh, LeBron James Cavaliers mm. TNT homecoming performance. Uh, talk about that experience. Like, what was that like for you? Yeah, that was great, man. It was it was, it was one of the things where I haven't seen energy like that inside of a city um, in a long time. It was like the Super Bowl, man. <laughs> you had to be out there, man. It was insane. Yeah, all them people out there cheering for their squad and, and, and you know they player come home. So I was just enlightened, you know. Uh, felt privileged you know a cat like me from the lakers <laughs> <laughs> so that's your team the lakers and, cannon yeah hell yeah. yeah and get some love. the lake show bro. i don't yeah, know why man, i would yeah, ask somebody yeah. from the west coast <laughs> yeah man. what team I'm from the east like, coast so what's I, up i mean but you know you lived in la for oh, a minute yeah, okay. so for them to just give me some love while i'm there you know yeah. being, being that that was the circumstance you know it was cool that's what's up yeah. man um you just came from new york Mm. Uh, we got to touch on this. You know, you dropped that verse yeah, a year yeah. ago, that control mm-hmm. verse. Yeah. Um, how have you been received? I know you've been in New York probably before then, but how how has New York received you since you dropped that control verse? Oh, uh, man. Yeah, I performed. I did shows and things like that. It was nothing. No, it was nothing. It was all love. The, <laughs> you know, the people that respected, you know, was, was, you know, people that knew the deal. Yeah. What's the important people <laughs> <laughs> that respected and knew what it was and, and you know, People that don't respect it, obviously, they're just people that don't get it and, and you know, really didn't matter. You it know what I'm saying? Is. So, uh, yeah, man, I always got love for New York. Absolutely. And, and New York love hip-hop, you know, so that always be the mecca. Exactly. And, and res- they respect what I do, and I always uh, uh, carry that legacy of straight rhymes and, and bars and things like that. I actually wanted that beat when I heard it. Yeah, I know. Big, Big I Sean had the opportunity. Up to actually be you know around when he made that beat and he was like yo this is for Kendrick mm. but it's being that he put it out there so much yeah. that it wound up coming back to you yep. you know what I'm saying I wanted that beat man yeah. I wanted that beat when, when Big Sean sent it to me you know, I tried to snatch it from him because you know he was saying it was a throwaway <laughs> right he was just you know he wanted to do something where he just threw the record out mm. he wasn't even supposed to be on his album mm. Uh, what did he end up on his album? Oh, nah, he wanted to be on, after, after it came out. He wanted yeah, to be on his album, yeah. but the initial point he hit me said he wanted to throw something out with us, just rapping. I said, all right, I, I do it. I like to have fun and, and you know spit bars and things like that. So you know he gave it to me. I said, man, let, let me have this beat, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you wasting beats over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, nah. <laughs> I was like, all right. <laughs> Speaking of beats, uh, you know, yeah. Cannon, shout out my man Lila Duff. They did that Holy Ghost yeah, with man. Jeezy. You jumped on that remix, man. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, Jeezy, Jeezy. I've always been a fan of Jeezy, man. He, he even in Good Kid, Mad City, one of the lines. Uh, <laughs> bumping Jeezy. I forgot the line. It's on the Art of Peer Pressure. And uh, yeah, he, he reached out, man. And, and you know, he, he hopped on West Side right on time. One of my early mixtape joints, man, and looked out for me. So. It's only right that we kept that relationship going, man. He reached out and said, I got a joint. Boom. Uh, rock on it. I rocked on it and did just that. Released that joint out there. That was crazy. That's crazy, man. Um, Kendrick, you know, you've been a student of the game. I don't know if anybody has ever asked you this question, but I'm going to ask you, um, uh, who is Kendrick's top five? My top five? That's tough, man. Dead or alive. <laughs> Dead or alive. I'm going to have to say uh, Snoop. Yes. Uh, there's one for sure. Of course, Pac. Another one. Uh, it switches, man, all the time. Like <laughs> Snoop, Pac, uh, Big, of course. M. Man, who would that wild card be? I'm gonna give it to somebody that that 
I haven't mentioned, you know, that inspired me as well. Busta Rhymes. Busta dope. Rhymes. That's yeah, Busta, Busta Rhymes definitely um, crafted uh, 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 my pen. You know, I was I was the kid bumping the Genesis album and that Anarchy. Sense. Absolutely. You know, things like that. Uh, extinction. Extinction level, you know. I go back to, to them, them them days of just, you know, being a fan of the music. So I'm definitely, I put them in the rankings. That's crazy. Can we expect a TDD, TDE album coming soon? Man, that's the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. Um, I think our focus has really been getting out the artists individually and stamping each other like that, you know. So now we're in a point where, okay, we probably can do it. You know, now everybody have their own look and have their own uh, visible sound and, 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 and charisma. Dope, man. Hey, Kendrick. Appreciate you for coming through, My man. My guy, man. Definitely a pleasure to have you. Much success. Good looking. Um, looking forward to the new album, new All project. Day. All I, day. Out here right now. Let's get it, man. It's much love, man. Salute. Peace. My guy. Good. Good. Good.